You'd be forgiven for thinking that the Australian government's new $25,000 Home Builder Grant actually helps you build a new home. Well, I can assure you, it doesn't. Well, it doesn't help you if you need to get a mortgage. If you have enough cash on hand to go out and build a home outright, then yes, it will help you. But seeing that one of the conditions is that you must earn less than $125,000 as a single or $250,000 as a couple, I doubt many eligible Australians have that much cash just laying about. Anyway, just for kicks and giggles, my wife and I came up with what we thought was a brilliant plan to secure our first home. We'd buy a piece of land outright for about $250,000, then we would use that as security to get a small mortgage of say $100,000. Because we are first home buyers, we knew we'd be eligible to receive $45,000 in grants, and on top of our extra savings, that would be enough to build our own home. The fact that the mortgage was much less than the land that we would own, we thought that no bank in their right mind would turn us down. We quickly checked online and found that paying back this mortgage even over 10 years would only cost us about $950 per month, as long as interest rates stay fairly low. That's less than what we pay now in rent. It was a win-win. But then we went to the local mortgage broker with our brilliant scheme and asked him if all of this was plausible. The answer from the mortgage broker came swiftly. Basically, no, it won't work. You see, in Queensland, we have access to three grants. The first homeowner's grant of $15,000, the regional home building boost grant of $5,000, and the federally funded home builder grant of $25,000. The only reason we ever contemplated going to the mortgage broker in the first place was because of this grant. The mortgage broker quickly pointed out that the first homeowner's grant can be used towards getting a mortgage, but the other two cannot. The regional boost grant does not get paid until after your house has been constructed. You can use the money for literally anything, so the banks do not accept it as part of their mortgage serviceability calculations. Similarly, the Home Builder Grant has the same problem. It is not paid to you until the foundations of your new house have been laid and the first progress payment has been made to your builder. Because the money is not available up front, banks will not include it in calculating your ability to service the mortgage, nor can you use it as part of a deposit. So basically, if you can't get a mortgage now, this $25,000 grant is not going to help you. It's effectively useless. If you can already get a mortgage, great, you'll get a bonus $25,000 after the slab has been laid. But you can use that money for anything you want to. You could put it towards your mortgage, but you don't have to. You could go out and put it all down the pokies if you wanted to. Basically, this grant is only an incentive to go out and build a new house. It doesn't actually help you get said house unless you already have plenty of money and just need that extra $25,000 to get you over the line, which I think is unlikely. All Finance Group broker Danny McLaughlin summed it up well. The Home Builder Grant in Queensland of $25,000 can't be processed by the lenders as they have not been appointed agents for the grant, unlike the First Homeowners Grant where they can manage the funds. So the grant is not available until the slab has gone down, which means the client has to incur the cost and then apply for the grant. The lenders subsequently are not taking the grant into consideration, which means they are charging mortgage insurance on the loans to the customers unnecessarily. So customers can use the grant for any other purpose once the funds are directed to them, which is defeating the purpose of the grant to boost construction. Back at the mortgage broker, my wife and I had one other issue. She is a permanent resident. For the first two grants, that's fine, but for the new Home Builder Grant, you must be a citizen. A permanent resident cannot get it. Why does this matter when I'm a citizen? Because it means we cannot apply as a couple. In order for me to get this grant, I must be the only name on the title of the property. My wife and I agreed that that would be okay, but then the mortgage broker told us that if I'm the only person on the title, then I must also be the only person applying for the loan. That means I must be able to fully service the loan by myself. It almost feels like I'm being punished for marrying a non-citizen. This all seems to be backed up on the Home Builder website. Mandeep and Sunita are buying a new house together, but because Sunita is not a citizen, they are not eligible for the grant as a couple. 
In this next example, Nellie is an Australian citizen, but her partner is not. She is eligible for the grant because she is applying as an individual and only her name will appear on the title as owner. In reality, as I said before, my wife and I only need a small mortgage of $100,000. Over 10 years, that's a fairly easy to manage monthly repayment of about $950, or even less, over 30 years. Our rent is more expensive than that, so obviously I could pay them back quite comfortably. But the lender would not accept it. Why? Because I have to service the loan as an individual. And because I have a wife and two kids, apparently I cannot possibly afford to look after them as well as pay back the mortgage. It's absurd, but that's how the banks calculate it. They don't use my actual expenses, they use something called HEM, Household Expenditure Measure, which determines that for my situation, I need to spend upwards of $3,000 a month on my family, which is simply not true. We are very frugal. Minimalism is my middle name. Unfortunately for me, HEM came under scrutiny during the recent Banking Royal Commission last year. Consequently, banks have become extremely cautious when it comes to lending. Even though my family and I could easily pay back a $100,000 loan in 10 years, the very fact that I have to apply as an individual for this stupid home builder grant, and the fact that my individual income is just not high enough, according to the bank, means that I won't be building a home this year. The Home Builder Grant has failed me. Even the mortgage broker told me that in reality, I'm no risk to the bank at all. Obviously, the fact that we would own a $250,000 piece of land, which the bank could easily sell off if we failed to pay back our mortgage, they simply won't do it. Thanks to the Banking Royal Commission, in the unlikely scenario that we were to fall on hard times and the bank were forced to sell our land, they'd be seen as evil monsters. We could go on a current affair, telling them how the evil bank gave us a mortgage that we weren't able to pay back, and they'd be labelled as the typical evil, greedy bankers. And the mortgage broker told us we would win. Because in that situation, the bank failed in its obligation to be a responsible lender. It's all about being responsible nowadays. Anyway, that's my little story. I hope you enjoyed it. Basically, the Home Builder Grant doesn't actually help people get a home. It only helps those who already have enough money to buy one, which to me, kind of defeats the purpose. Mm -hmm.